Five self-defense class or martial arts online class, you're gonna discover how to fight with your walking cane. Grab your cane and follow me. I'm gonna be using this basic rattan training cane. Comes from the uh, website below. I put the link down there if you wanna get one or get one from any CVS, pharmacy, Walgreens, whatever you have close to you. They all work and they're pretty inexpensive. This one is listed below. It's a little bit different. It's a martial arts training cane. So it's gonna be a little bit more durable and it hits really hard. So you can carry this with you just about anywhere you go. It's very effective for self-defense. You have the strikes, all different directions. You have close strikes. You can use it for close quarters combat. Moving somebody off, you can hit somebody to the side. You can reach out and keep them at a distance. It's very effective for self-defense. Warm up here, hold it in your hand. What I do is I close the hand, I keep it relaxed. And it's like I'm making this cranking motion that allows it to twist and slide through my hand. Keep your stomach tight, abs tight, over and back, coming through. You're welcome, it's my pleasure. It's one of my favorite weapons for street fight self-defense because you can take it literally everywhere you go. I went to the county office this morning to renew my driver's license or get an out-of-state driver's license. Moved over, had this with me. You take this into the county building and they don't even, they don't even scan it. They don't even look at it because it's a walking cane. It's a medical device. But now I'm in there without anything else. They didn't want to let me take in my tiny little pocket knife that goes on my key, walk back out, stick that in the car, but I'm allowed to take this in. And I, I'm laughing to myself, right? Because this thing creates so much force, so much speed, so much power. I can strike this way. I can use the hook end. It'll take out an eye, it'll smash the nose, it'll take the teeth out of your mouth, all for self-defense, but I can carry this wherever I go. I can take it on a train, I can be sitting at the bus stop with it, I can then get on the bus when it comes, and if I need to, from a seated position, I can also strike, I can do all of the same techniques. You can even do the warm-up spin, which is what I want you to do just to get everything safe from injury. But keep it safe from injury, get that blood flowing in there, First, just to the side, and then out and in. Notice I bring this hand up. Practice thinking about self-defense all the time. Always guard your head with your other hand. They hit you in the head and you go unconscious. They turn off your operating system. You're in big trouble. There's nothing you can do to defend yourself. If they hit your arm, it might hurt. It's a lot better than them hitting your head, smashing your nose, removing your ability to see or your ability to breathe, keep your hands up. Back and forth, put it in the other hand, same thing. My hand is closed, but open enough. You can see that the light coming through, just enough that it can twist. Now you're not gonna use this motion. I know some people will say, you can use this and use this to keep someone back, and you could, but if you know anything about spinning like this, that might hit hard the first time, but it bounces a little bit through your hand because your hand's relaxed. And it's just not an effective self-defense technique, right? Just twisting. And again, I know some people are saying that this is, and I'm not trying to contradict anybody, but I'm saying from my experience, now training with this for over a year, I find that the most basic techniques are always the most important. Basic strike, slicing, slicing strikes or slashing strikes he was trying to get those two words together. Coming through horizontally, right? At an angle, straight down the middle. And then of course, just like as if you had a rifle in your hand with your bayonet, this bayonet strike. And then the other side, that rifle butt strike, this big uh, hand here, the handle, like a giant knuckle. It gives you more space to smash, more area, more volume, so that you, wherever you hit, you can hit here, you can adhere this part of self-defense is basic techniques done with speed, power, hard as you can. Good. Thank you. Yeah, he's got a lot of good stuff on here, but this is a warm up. That doesn't mean because you're not going to use this necessarily for self-defense that you don't do it. You do it for two reasons. One, it's going to give you proprioception. It's going to allow you to get a better feel for how this cane is going to move. And it's gonna slide 
You're welcome. Thanks for being here. It's going to slide through your hand easier. So when you get into that better position and you say, stay back, I'll defend myself, your hand goes from here to here, and you don't have to think about it. And that comes from this. This is very important for that reason. Number two, when you're doing this standing or sitting, it forces your stomach up and in. So your core becomes stronger. Your heart rate starts to go up the faster you go. You're going to start to break a sweat, lean out a little bit quicker, improve your mobility. Everything improves here. It's going cross body, so it's good for your brain, elasticity, keeping you younger. But you don't, again, don't necessarily use in the fight. But like I say all the time, it's like a boxer jumps rope or does other exercises, push-ups, sit-ups, medicine balls. And the idea, yeah, good point. The idea is that you have this technique when you defend yourself and fight, all these things, all these things that you do, but you do this in training, just like a boxer jumps rope. So you're conditioned and you're ready to go when you have to defend yourself. All right, let's go over basic strikes. From here, I'm gonna start with my right hand. I want you to get in the habit of training this way. Put all your weight, not all your weight, but put your weight on it like you're using it as a walking cane because that's what it is. And maybe you have to, so you're already used to this. Take a couple steps and imagine in your head because I want you to visualize as much as possible. This helps with self-defense. Pay attention to the standards or the process of self-defense. Number one, pay attention to what's happening around you, right? Situational awareness, hello? Number two, get in a better position. So I want you to practice, take a couple steps, imagine the threats right in front of you, step into it or step back. Either one is correct. It all depends on the distance and you'll do it instinctively. But you're walking, you're walking, step up, put your hands up. One hand is open. Anybody watching this recording, which happens a lot these days, right? There are either cameras for security everywhere or someone pulls out their phone because there's some kind of uh, uh, altercation or there's some commotion. Everybody's recording it and then you show up later on Twitter and then later on the news and they say, um, uh, not, not recently. Not recently, not since I was younger and in the military. But from here, you bring your hand up. Have they attacked you? This is how we can always learn from each other. Um, we could all share our experiences. So we bring it up this way, and it goes between me and the threat. If we imagine the threat is here, I'm walking, I just step. I put this hand here. The cane, which is a hard piece of wood, goes between me and the threat. Now, if they have a knife, I'd rather have a hard piece of wood, a stick in my hand, a long stick, by the way, and there's a hook on the other side. If they've got that sharp knife, a piece of steel, right? And maybe theirs is this long, yours is this long. They have a knife, yes, but you also have a stick that you can then strike hard and forcefully with to defend yourself. This is better than flesh, than bone and everything in there. All the blood comes out, you get the drift, right? So practice that, take a couple steps, get in your better position. From this position, your hand is open, telling the world, everybody who's recording you, that you are trying to stop the fight, that you are trying to defend yourself, that you are not the aggressor. Even if you hit them first, they come at you, you know at some point they're going to attack you, they're going to hit you, then yes, please hit them first. Hit them first, hit them fast, hit them as hard as you can in self-defense. But again, you started in this position. You said, back up, you're getting too close, I'll defend myself. And then you took action. You took action so you didn't freeze. They say fight or flight. Everybody either has fight or flight, but from our experience and from what we know, the truth is there's a third one, which is freeze. Most people freeze. They freeze they go like, and then they just get beat on because they haven't prepared. You're preparing by doing this. You're preparing by practicing your strikes thinking about the process or the uh, system of self-defense, the standards. Number one, pay attention, situational awareness. Number two, get in a better position. Number three, ask yourself, what are my targets? And here's where we're gonna talk about technique. Targets can be the eyes, anything you're gonna remove or um, erase or destroy. So the ability to see, the ability to breathe temporarily through the nose and the mouth, smash it the blood's coming out they're sucking down their blood the ability to breathe uh permanently yeah absolutely oh 
You are Gary Hernandez. I just saw the whole thing. Yeah, so um, if you're watching this and you see Gary in there, go visit his stuff. He's been doing this way longer than I have. He knows a lot more than I do, right? And I know that he's not on here just to do that, but um, I, I learned from that. And I'm just down the street from uh, uh, Mark Shuey's place. I mean, I think he's out, he's out in, uh, not Lake Placid, that's New York. What's the other one? Out in California. But they sell all the canes and stuff just down the street, I think in like Boca or Del Rey or something like that, maybe Boca Raton. Anyway, it's a small world once you start to get the martial arts together. It's a very small world. The point is this, we can learn from each other, right? So you're in this position, pay attention to the uh, uh, situation awareness, better position, the stick goes between me and you, and then number three, all right, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Number three, your strikes. What are you gonna, what strike, what tool do you have, in this case the cane, what technique are you gonna use, in this case, this first angular strike, right? From here to here, now look at this, it comes from here from the back. If I make a big slicing motion, and I have tall ceilings today, <laughs> Depends on which weapon I'm using. When I use the bow staff, my ceilings sometimes get low. With the cane, it seems like my ceilings are always tall enough. But I, I'm on the bus, I'm in the train, I'm in the plane, I'm in the, the county tax office paying my thing and I'm sitting in the little cubicle. All of a sudden, because those places can drive people crazy, right? All of a sudden there's a mass shooting or there's a mass attack event or the guy next door is losing his stuff because he doesn't want to wear his mask and he's perturbed, and he didn't bring all the right stuff today. That was me. <laughs> but, but no, I wasn't losing my coal. I'm joking about that. But you get the picture, right? And all of a sudden, you're sitting there, and they took your tiny little pocket knife when you went through the scanner, the sheriff's deputy, and you're sitting there, and all you have is a cane, a big stick. And you can stand up, and you get behind, and then you start to defend yourself. The point is, the nice thing about this first technique is if you look here, it's forward. You still have this arcing slicing motion, very important. But from here, it's that first hard strike. Now, number four, the fourth principle, self-defense. Number one, situational awareness. I like to beat these into the ground, by the way. Situational awareness, pay attention. What's happening close? Go out of your door. Who's across the street? Where's the threat coming? Two, get in a better position when you realize you need it. Hands up and open, the other hand holding the stick between you and the threat. Here's the threat. I've got this much distance, at least. And I can strike from here. Do I want to fight him here if I can, or here? And if you have to fight him here, just different techniques because you ask yourself, what are the targets? What am I going to remove or destroy? Ability to see, ability to breathe, ability to chase after me. Maybe I'm going down to the leg, right? Maybe it's an animal, maybe in the neighborhood, especially around here, a lot of pit bulls. I see lots and lots of pit bulls. And I know some people, maybe not the ones I see, but I know some people train a pit bull to fight other animals and then they put money on it. You know what I'm talking about, Michael Vick, right? And they, you know, he's supposed to be uh, all healed up and now from that, but you know what I'm saying? These wild animals, they go around. If you read the news, you put pit bull attack in the Google search, it'll just pop up all these stories. Almost every single day, a group of animals, usually a pit bulls, are out there mauling people. Kids, adults, young people, old people, but you got your cane with you, and you're walking, all of a sudden, the dogs, and then you have to go low for self-defense. But it's better than if you did nothing, and you just get, like, ripped up. Yeah, come all the way down here to uh, South Florida, and we'll train. Water's right here, got the bark right next door. It's always sunny in Southern Florida. It's amazing. I said, you know, there's that show sunny in Philadelphia or whatever. I don't know about that. Um, it's beautiful down here though. You're welcome. Always an open invitation. I love to train with everybody. Bill Super Wallace is just down the street. We'll get him. I don't think he needs a cane though. He, that guy's still got it, man. He still punches and kicks. All right, back to the cane. If you're here. This doesn't require a high ceiling. From here, angle one, angle two, one, two. Now, this is what I want you to think about always and forever. Once you learn the basic technique and you are good at going through this tight, always fight from behind your stick, keep it in front of you, this tight range of motion, right? Then you must start to increase 
speed, force, power, because it's gonna feel different in your hand when you do that. Your hands are gonna be sore. You're gonna feel all that force and pressure you're creating through that strike coming through the stick. Now you might not have a bag, and in here I've got lots of bags, right? Got the Muay Thai bag, we can practice high, we can practice on the jabs, I can use the other end, we can practice. And then I have this bag, the water bag. My point is, if you have it, practice with it. If you don't, you're still gonna get a great, effective workout, and you're gonna train. You're gonna make the connection between your brain and your hand and your body for self-defense and what it's gonna feel like. Increase your intensity. We often do so many things, especially in this world, in this society, we don't wanna be too loud. We don't wanna be too big, which is funny. They tell us to be quiet and you're getting too loud when you're a kid and they beat it out of us. Well, self-defense, it's ugly, it's not pretty, it's a lot of force, it's a lot of power, uh, a lot of mistakes you're gonna make. You're gonna fall down, you're gonna have to get back up. You're gonna lose your stick, you're gonna have to get back up. Your stick's gonna break. You're gonna have to go hand to hand, but you have to move that. Yeah, I, I used to all the time. I used to hike with mine, and I used to walk with mine. It's just a walking stick. People just think you're a little quirky because you have a uh, thing. Excellent, good for you, man. Your brain, your body's gonna be getting really good at all that kind of stuff. That's the beauty of martial arts, right, Master Hernandez? It's all about self-mastery, mastery of the basics, uh, leveling up to these new levels you never thought you'd get to. That's why you keep training, but you gotta get out of your comfort zone. You have to push yourself. You're welcome, it's my pleasure. All right, so first angle, second angle, the palm comes up, third angle. Now the purpose of palm up, and a lot of you know this already, but the purpose is that when you bring it up this way and you run into resistance, it doesn't peel out of your hand. If your hand is here, you bring it up here, you see it starts to pull my hand. The more I do that, that puts a lot of force here. It's a very weak position compared to this technique. If it's enough force, they grab hold of it and they try to rip it. It comes right out of my hands. So I'm gonna come. You see what it just, it, it's like that Kung Fu grip in the old GI Joes. Some of you guys are old enough. You know what I'm talking about. They always had those rubber hands, the Kung Fu grip. Pops right out. If your palm's here, it doesn't. For the same reason, facing the other way, you bring it up the other way. Nice. Yeah, I'm from, I'm from uh, Ohio. And you know, he was in Indiana. We used to run a big tournament in Columbus. He'd come every single year for years and years and years. I was down here working out with my Cuban boxing coach. Uh, amazing coach, right? And I'm in the ring and this grizzled old dude looked tough. And man, he said, hey man, you mind if I go to a corner to warm up? And I'm thinking, that's Bill Superfoot Wallace. I said, absolutely, come on in. And the uh, rest is history. Not that there's a lot of history there. I just work out a lot when he's there. And I asked him, hey man, can I, I wanna show people that you're never too old and that you're just, not just, anybody's never, you're no, none of us are ever too old. But this guy, Bill Superfoot Wallace, if you don't know who he is, Google him. Go look at the video. I made a couple videos with him, the little interviews I did. Cause I don't want you to see his past fights with uh, like Joe Lewis from 19, whatever it was when they were at the prime, which is awesome. But thank you, I'd love to. But it's, it's all about um, the fact that the guy now is in his mid to late seventies and he's still, he's still quick. He can still move without falling over and trip. He's not all, sitting on a couch watching television 12 hours a day, taking 48 pills just to keep his ticker ticking, making sure he wears the, the Wuhan mask everywhere because he's afraid. He's not, you know, he's smart. He's like, a, he's like an old Corvette. It's like a 69 Corvette. He's still fast and he is. He's still agile and he's still very powerful and explosive and he's super cool, he's super cool to watch when he's moving. Bill Superfoot Wallace, he still, he still has that leg, comes all the way up, kicks above his head. 
And the fact is that if he can do it, and he said this, if I can do it, you can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. And that's why it's so super cool. And again, I mean, this is an area where everybody retires to, right? So there's a lot of those guys down here. All right, anyway, as soon as the restrictions raise a little bit, I'm gonna see if he can come in. I'm gonna reach out and humbly ask, hey, can you come talk to you guys so we can all learn from this guy? I don't know him so super well at all, but um, you know, like I said, I run into him uh, pretty often before this whole thing shut down. All right, back to the training. Angle one, angle two, three, four. I want you to do a horizontal strike. And here's what I want to tell about all these strikes, right? It's all about the level because it's targets. What are the targets? You're going to remove his eyesight, his ability to see you, or and maybe it's multiple people. Maybe this guy is to the head, and this guy can to take out his leg, and this guy, because he came running up behind you. But this is what I was thinking about today, is that when you're talking about multiple attackers, especially extremely powerful, um, as powerful as this, and probably a little bit more powerful, especially one that I have that's made out of white oak. It's very heavy. It's not very heavy, it's pretty heavy. It's about the same diameter. And if you know how to use it and the techniques, they're all, they're pretty similar. I mean, they all come from all weapons. A lot of these strikes come from a Screamer, Kali, Salat, right? Um, but they also, the first one I learned was Hapkido cane. And the Hapkido cane came from the Joe and the Boken or Ken, the slices. And, and then there's a lot of joint locks and pressure points and takedowns you can do with the hook. And we can go into that. Master Hernandez could teach you a lot of that stuff too. But I like to get super down, dirty, fast self-defense. Thinking about three, maybe more people. And when you uh, defend yourself, keep your stick tight. Keep it close to you. Hit this guy here. Hit this guy here. You can smash this guy back simply by pushing here. Right? You're right here, the guy's up in your face. You bring your hands up the same way, you pull it down, and all of a sudden, you put this stick on the throat. I don't care how big and strong he is, his throat has, the, right here, the larynx, his ability to breathe. As soon as you start pushing, he's gotta move back. I don't care how big, he could be the world's strongest man. I watch those guys all the time. Two of them are getting ready to box. Half your Bjornsson or whatever, the. The mountain from Game of Thrones, dude's like 6'9", a billion pounds, he can lift a car over his head, and then Eddie Beast Hall from Great Britain, and that guy's, he looks like a tiny little man compared to the 6'9 guy, but he's 6'2", he's huge too, but let's say the two of those guys are coming in your face, and you take this, you'd have to do it like this, up to his throat, and you start to push, and you just walk him back, I don't care how big and strong they are, you can't make this big and strong. That starts to gag them, they gotta back up. That's why martial arts is so effective. It's smarts against superior numbers. It's brains and strategy and technique that you've honed through practice against multiple attackers, against a fighter who's younger, a fighter who's stronger. None of that matters. If you have better timing and distance, it comes with experience, but you also have to understand principles, not necessarily techniques. Maybe he's a jitsu guy and he's got the the good jujitsu skills, and you need to know how to do a little bit of how to stop them from taking you down once you're on your back before you get choked out. And, and honestly, uh, a lot of those jitsu guys, really good guys, so they're not gonna be running around jitsu. You. Most people in a, one of these fights, it's especially these big melee attacks that you see now, it's guys swinging uh, baseball bats and throwing uh, iced water bottles and smashing people with chunks of concrete and bricks and all you have is a big stick in your hand, right? And so you create this distance. So you realize you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, and then bam, you gotta hit this guy, hit this guy, smash this guy back, smash the leg, and then walk quickly out of there, right? If you use it for walking, but you get my point. This gives you options. It's a force multiplier. You know maybe how to do some of this, how to throw some elbows and some knees, and if you don't, watch some of those videos too. I love all you guys when you watch me with the bow and the Joe and the Boken and the nunchucks and the cane and the collie sticks and even the fighting fan. I've been looking for, I can't find my fighting fan. I was gonna do a fighting fan video. Mostly because it's just for fun, right? And there is some practicality there because it's simply just a stick. 
and you can fight with a stick. So, but the point is this, once that breaks or comes flying out of your hand, you don't want to be doing this because you have no other option. You're like, oh, I lost my weapon. All I did was train with my weapon. You want that to drop in the bam, bam, then get out of there. Boom. Just be able to throw a couple simple uh, basic punches and then drive some elbows and then slam some knees and then get out of there and run. And you can learn how to do that and practice one, two, move, one, two, move, right? Move in, move back, move to the side, move to the side, and you're gonna be better for it because your body gets stronger faster, you lean out faster. Before we finish, talked about it briefly. For review, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is down the middle of their, their head, right? And then eight, I want you to do a rifle like a bayonet attack, a rifle strike with the tip just somewhere in their midline. I don't care if you hit them in the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the throat, the uh, solar plexus. You even hit them in the sternum, you're still going to back them up. Uh, gut, groin, private parts, just straight in. Again, it's this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then switch the other hand. Now, when I switch the other hand, notice that the hook is there. The hook side has a little bit more weight when you hold it here. Now you're hitting a lot harder, but only if you have practiced first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And see that? It's almost like the rifle button now, but it just comes straight in. And again, what's your target? The midline, smash them back. And then the other hand, one, two, start to speed it up. Seven, eight, other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, down. And I can tell you, it feels so different with the hook on the end as I'm swinging. But you have to know that in practice before you ha happen to do it on the street for self-defense because you're used to having perfect practice. By the way, perfect practice doesn't make perfect. Nothing makes perfect. Uh, but you have this perfect practice, perfect conditions, nice matted floors, the air conditioning's on, there aren't broken pieces of glass everywhere, there aren't uh, people running to your right and your left, and your peripheral vision getting disturbed, and then you get out there and you need it for real, for self-defense, you grab it by the wrong end, the end you're not used to using, and all of a sudden the weight feels so different. So try to put yourself in that situation and practice. Then, I want you to do this, because I want you, again, I want you to lean out. I want you to be strong and fit from now until the day you die. And you only do that when you get out of your comfort zone. And I'm not just talking to you, I'm talking to me, right? Yeah, well, and Master Hernandez will tell you, because I sense that he knows about the Hapkido cane. When we all did the Hapkido cane for years, there are all these great, great techniques with grabbing. There's the neck from the back. Just think about it. you grab that neck, slam the right, but there's the neck from the front, from the side. All the hands, like I said, you got the joint locks, the pressure points. You have your hand here, he grabs your wrist, you bring it up, crank it down, all that stuff's effective. But this hook, you smash right there at the ankle. Boom, grab the, uh, the other end because it wrapped behind his Achilles tendon, and then you just jerk it out of him. Boom, he's on the ground. But don't overcomplicate it. Simple is always better when we talk about self-defense. As simple as you can, and as hard as you can. Principle number four is full commitment in every single strike. Every strike, you should be trying to end the fight. It's not like if I'm going three three-minute rounds or 10 three-minute rounds or whatever it is, yeah, where I'm gonna feel them out, boom, boom, right? Boom, just feeling them out. Maybe I'm, you know, kickboxing, throwing some, and then the second round, you come out just a little bit quicker, right? Boom, boom, see if you can't catch them off guard. And then the last 30 seconds, bah, 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 and, and then I get 30 seconds to breathe. And my coach is sitting there throwing water in my face and taking the bruising out and the, the, you know what I mean? Cutting the thing like Rocky, got to cut his eye open. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, I don't know if he's got a buddy getting ready to run up behind me with that piece of concrete and in me because he just smashed my brains out. So I got to end this guy as hard, fast as I can so that I can be here if I need to be. So don't get in this, uh, don't get tricked by the idea that 
all your techniques are going to save you because it's not about technique. It's about principles. Situational awareness, number one. Number two, better position between you and the threat. Here's my threat, right? Number three, what are your targets? Are you going up? Are you going in the middle? Are you going down? Are you going for their knees? Are you going for that, uh, that wild dog or that uh, savage group of dogs? Are you going for, has he got a knife? Is he pulling something out, getting ready to hit you? Maybe you've got to hit that hand right away. Uh, but what are your targets? And then number four, it's that full commitment. Every strike trying to end the fight. And if you don't practice this way, hard and as fast, and get that heart rate up, get the pressure there, put some stress on your body, you're not going to be able to do it when you need it. So make sure you're doing that. Now, I want to show you a couple ways to become more fighting fit. When I say fighting fit, fit to fight, however you want to think about it, I'm not talking about like looking like a bodybuilder. I'm talking about um, lean and strong at every age. I'm talking about Bill Superfoot Wallace. I'm talking about his commitment to himself to stay comfortable with the ability at 76 or whatever he is to still fight. And when I met him last year, he was 74, 76. Uh, Bill, if you see this, I'm sorry, I don't forget how old we were, but he's 70 plus, right? And he's probably cl getting closer to 80 than 70. And he was preparing for a fight in Canada with another uh, senior martial artist for an exhibition, but he's still getting in the ring. He's still gonna get punched and kicked. He's still gonna kick and punch. He's still gonna get, right? He's still gonna feel it. The point is, for the rest of your life, if you're serious and committed, stay strong. Stay capable of defending yourself at every age. And understand, you're not gonna be moving like you moved when you're 19 and 20. And those of you who are older like me, you know that. But that doesn't mean that all of the issues that you might have faced in the last 20 or 30 years of getting older, then it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with age. It has everything to do, um, I'll answer your question in just a second. It has everything to do with lifestyle. Too much TV, and in this case, and now, uh, tablet time, iPad, or iPod, or whatever you want to call it, uh, to, uh, too many hours reading CNN headlines or Fox headlines, just getting yourself all amped up and worried about stuff you have no control over, too much time eating garbage food, too much time working eight hours a day like this or driving eight hours a day or whatever it is, too much time giving yourself excuses why you're too tired, you don't have enough this, you don't have enough of that to go to the gym, to go for a brisk walk every day after you eat your dinner, every day after you eat your dinner, brisk walk, and we all do it, right? But the point is, those are lifestyle diseases, those are not aging related. Aging related, there is some stuff there, but you can also combat it and turn it around a lot by eating well, drinking lots of good water, right? Uh, good nutrition, five servings of fresh fruits and vegetables a day, just like we tell the little kids, and then moving your body and putting a little bit of stress. You don't have to go sprinting like you did when you were 15 and you wanted to try out for the football team and be a running back, but you should go for a brisk walk, right? If you need a cane, use it to get you moving again. And I want to show you this real quick. Put it in the middle and you're going to go down and up. Just an, It's called an assisted squat, right? An assisted squat and you'll be shocked. If you haven't done squats in a while, you'll be shocked at how easy, how much easier it is to do it with this than just do like an air squat, which is also valuable. But the nice thing about this is you'll go a little deeper. You won't have as much pain in your legs or your back but your heart rate's getting up and your body's releasing trace amounts of the hormones that are gonna lean you out faster, rebuild your muscle, improve the chemistry inside whether you're a man or a woman, especially as you're getting older and you're just gonna do sets of 10. And then as you get more lean, go to sets of 20. Do no less than three sets. Go up to five sets, that's a good number. And then put your hand up, because you should always have your hand up, and practice step lunges to the front 10 times and then stepping back because when you step back, you're going to stabilize the knee and the muscles around the knee, the quadriceps. When you step forward, you're getting more hamstring, both directions, you're getting your glutes, right? And then if you wanna progress it, third set from the middle, 
side step squats, just side to side. But do those. If you haven't been super active and super mobile for the last however many years, or if you just want to feel stronger, throw those into your training. So you warm up like this, 30 seconds doing this, and then 30 seconds doing this. Go to the other hand, 30 seconds here, doing this, and then 30 seconds doing this. And then, and you get the point. 30 seconds practicing the first two strikes, and then 30 seconds side to side. And then keep adding those in and adding those in as you work out. Do it stronger, faster. You'll lean out. You'll lose a lot of body fat very quickly. Your cardio will get better. Your ability to defend yourself will increase. And then I want to show you one last thing. At the end of your workout, after you've done everything else, you take your band. And if you don't have a band, these are really, really easy to get. See how this just drops there? I'm going to keep this in front of my chest. And the funny thing is the way our brains work, you're gonna be trying to do something like this. So if you get all confused and frustrated, like it's not working, just check yourself. Is it in front of your chest? Take your other hand. You can move it back there to get it back there, by the way. Take your other hand and bring it up and put it on just like that. Terraria, I know, uh, sounds of Terraria. I've, I've said this before. I said I was gonna answer your question, I'm gonna answer it. But I'm gonna answer this for you and for me and for everybody else who uh, cares to listen. You can focus on everything that can go wrong in the fight. What happens if they take my stick? What happens if I get uh, stuck in a corner? What happens if there are 12 of them? One of them's got a laser gun and he puts me under stun and then I lose my stick and then they stomp on my head. Or since you're using your imagination, you can imagine all the ways that you're getting stronger and healthier and faster. And if you did have to defend yourself, you're the person who wins the fight. If you can imagine the fight, Imagine yourself winning. Stop focusing on what happens when they take my stick. What happens when they pull out a machine gun against my cane? Well, guess what? You're dead, right? <laughs> you knew that. But the point is our minds will either focus on what we can do or what we can't do. But it's, just, it's imagination. You have 100% control. Control your thinking. It's like making your bed every day. Wake up every day, make your bed, brush your teeth, and then while you're doing those two things, tell yourself, I'm gonna have an awesome day. This day's gonna be fantastic. I'm so grateful that I got to be woken up today. I'm so glad that no one's beating my head in right this second. Focus on what you've got instead of what you might not have. And then, <laughs> but that's the truth, right, Sinj man? That's it, that's it. If you have control over what you think about, which you do a thousand times, a thousand percent of the time, when you feel those negative, weird, uh, Defeat, self-defeating thoughts, when they start to come in, take a deep breath, go for that brisk walk, and while you're walking, you have to, and it's like digging in the sand. We go to the beach here almost every day now. You dig in the sand, the water comes in and it fills it up. You dig in the sand, you make a cool hole, and the wave comes in, fills it up, and, it's, and it looks like you never did anything. If you dig in the sand and you put your bucket in there, and in your bucket you got a bunch of shells and rock or whatever, when that water comes up, as long as you hold on to the bucket, that hole stays there because you put something else in the hole. Your brain is like that. Your thoughts are like that. So when you start having those negative self-defeating thoughts, you have to dig them out, turn the volume down. You hear yourself saying, but what if they take my cane and they stick it in my eye and I, I only have one good eye to start with and now I can't see it all. And then they pull out a knife and they stab me in the ear. Now I can't hear. When you feel those thoughts start to come into your head or you hear them, turn the volume down, take a deep breath and say, what if I get stronger and faster? What if I get really good at these techniques? What if I come up with new techniques that no one's ever thought about? What if I'm so strong and so fast no one ever messes with me again? What if my confidence grows and I feel so good about myself that I stop going into the situations that are getting me in trouble in the first place? And if you can imagine turning the volume up on the good thoughts, the ones that lift you higher in life, because you only have, you have those two choices. You go down or you go up. Then your whole life will change and after a while, your habits change and you stop having those negative self-defeating thoughts. So I know I've said this to you before, but that's the truth. That's what you have to start to do. Um, get, if you have a choice, get, this is rattan. This is what a lot of the bow staffs are made of, Chinese, Korean style, especially, especially Chinese style. The rattan is very lightweight and you can learn a lot of stuff and get good fast. 
and then gradually get like an oak. Um, if you buy it from martial arts supply, it's usually red oak, which is an inexpensive uh, wood, and they don't always, they're not always treated right. So by treating, I mean like a process of treating. So they have, they don't, they, they get dried out and they break too easily. You can go on Etsy and get someone to hand make you a bow and they're great uh, artists on there and that's a little bit more expensive, but those will last you forever. Those will last you forever. And then um, if you go to competition and you like that kind of thing, you'll want graphite, you want something super lightweight and they're smaller, it's called a toothpick style. And uh, so they're different styles. But start with, if you go to the, the link below where it says martial arts gear or supplies or whatever, uh, or get a cane here, martial arts store, they, I have on that collection, I have a whole bunch of options. And you can go lightweight and go a little bit heavier, but if you're just starting out, start with a broomstick until you get your first one. And that way you get a feel for it. But then go and get a, um, uh, like rattan. Rattan or bamboo, bamboo's heavy and not always as flexible. Get a rattan if you can. That'll be a great one that'll serve you for a lot. You can use it for self-defense, you can fight with it. You can do practice with other people. If they have a good staff, you guys can hit your staffs together. As soon as I'm able to, I'm gonna get somebody in here. I'm gonna show everybody how to do that. But start with that. And then once you become like really confident, you feel really good about yourself with the staff, go get yourself a really nice one or make one. No, I, I wish I was, but I don't always have that uh, availability. All right, real quick before we go, I have it around my back. Let me just show you, cause I've been yakking my, bumping my gums, as I like to say, for too long. Start with it, just kind of hangs down. Here, we'll start all the way from the beginning. This is just a band, bring it down here. One hand reaches behind. The stick, the cane, stays in front of your chest. You bring it around, and then you start doing push-ups with it. And it, ha it should be around your arms, and you're gonna feel this really fast. And you're gonna go slow. These are all variations, by the way. You can do slow sets where it's slow out and in and you never stop don't stop when it's out don't stop when it's in you want time under tension you want as much pressure there as possible sets of 12 depending on how strong your band is you can go to 15 and then rest and then the next set explosive and slow fast out and slow in fast out and then rest a little bit the next set slow out fast in slow out get get my drift right and then try going out up out down so you're hitting the chest in three different ways down is going to work on the bottom part of your chest and bring your chest up if you need that kind of thing up is going to work on the decollete or the upper part of your chest two three four and then finish with this push and turn push and turn and we really didn't go over this but if someone grabs me grabs the cane, right? Their hand is here. They're going to twist it and slam it right down on their face. They're going to go to the ground. They reach out and grab, just twist, boom, even with its two hands. One more thing for the arms because it's going to help you get a good uppercut, a hard punch. You're going to put it under your bum. Yeah, it is. And it's going to make you super strong and more confident with your cane. Now, it's just under my glutes. The rest is the same. I roll my hips back. Like I'm sitting on the toilet and then I curl, two, three. And after one set, I'm gonna change my grip. So then my grip's here. So I'm now working more on my forearm and the outside of the arm. Elbows are always gonna be close to body. Bend back, up, two, three, four. And then again, depending on how strong your band is, this band, and here's, here's a tip. You can get these from Amazon. Go to my link at Amazon below or I got this at Marshall's, TJ Maxx, Home Goods. It's all the same company. And they are, um, they always have stuff like this. This is from Bally's. I worked at Bally's years and years ago. 65 pounds strong. I've been using this for months. You can do all kinds of stuff. I like to do it back here and then practice running and punching, right? You wanna get leaned out really fast. Do this for 30 seconds, rest for 10 seconds, and then do this for 30 seconds. It's gonna give you really fast hands, but it's also gonna give you that leanness that you're looking for. All right, I gotta go. You guys were awesome, thanks so much. Please check out the links below. I'll see you guys on the next one.